In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what a year it has been, yeah? It has been a full year now since the pandemic was declared and the Anglican churches across the diocese were closed to in-person worship, including us on March the 15th last year. I remember scrambling with the wardens to address how we were to handle this new way of being. Videotape readings and prayers, typewritten homilies, Catherine McGuire and I singing duets and recording the hymns, and a somewhat live video of me being in the church saying the prayers on behalf of the parish on Sunday mornings. Did you know that all of my recordings were done on my simple little Samsung uh, cell phone? No elaborate equipment needed, just innovation with what we already had in our possession. Thank God for Lori Johnson and Trish Glover our communications team, along with myself. We didn't miss a beat. The services were posted on our St. Francis of Assisi face group, Facebook group page. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And uh, emails were sent to everyone on our email mailing list with YouTube links. Genius. And it's been that way ever since we started Together with that brief period, we opened once again for in-person worship from mid-September to mid-November. And who had ever heard of Zoom until the pandemic? Well, we all know about it now, don't we? This is the way that we have stayed socially connected while being physically apart. And yes, I know that you may be getting tired of all this virtual stuff, as our only way of keeping up with our spiritual lives and keeping in touch with what is going on in the church and in the lives of our friends in the parish. This year has brought upon us, whether we like it or not, an intense look at our internal and spiritual journey. We have been forced to look at ourselves, think about our innermost fears and hopes and dreams and failures and challenges of our lives. We have all dealt with the agony and grief of losing loved ones in a time when we have not even been able to gather together to give thanks for our loved ones' lives. No church service, no communion, no reception, no hugs, no kisses, nothing that we would normally have in the time of our greatest need. We have, however, come to understand what it is in our lives that we do cherish. We cherish our families. We cherish our health. We appreciate that we may have been able to keep our jobs and continue to pay the rent or pay the mortgage and put food on the table because we know that so many people have lost their jobs and income. And everything that we may have been taken for granted has in a swift moment been taken away. We struggle, and yet in the midst of our struggle, we continue to do our best, give our best efforts, and we have discovered what it means to be our best selves. Loneliness has been the order of the day, especially for our seniors living in long-term care. I know that I have and many of our parishioners are reaching out to those in need and who may be alone by making phone calls, text messages, emails, and the good old handwritten card or letter. We must continue to do whatever we can in order to make it through this long, dark night. On the brighter side, yeah, let's get there, we continue to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, babies being born, yes, and even weddings. We never give up hope because hope is what keeps us getting up in the morning. Hope is what keeps us smiling each day that we connect with each other. 
Hope is what keeps us positive about the future as we pray for this pandemic to end and get back to that sense of normal when we know that everything is going to work out all right. It is very appropriate that on this anniversary of the pandemic that we hear the story of Moses in the wilderness listening to the people complain about their lot in life. I love the humanity of the people of Israel. Moses, did you bring us out of Egypt only to die in this wilderness? There's no food and there's no water. And we detest this miserable food anyway. So I guess there was food. But they just didn't like it. What's this? Broccoli? I hate broccoli. Well, actually, I like broccoli. I should have said cauliflower. <laughs> yeah. Then the poisonous snakes come and bite the people for their complaining and many died. The interesting thing that happens next is after the people repent of their complaining, it is the cause of their death that becomes the agent of their healing. God tells Moses to make a serpent of bronze and place it on a pole. And when a person gets bitten by a snake, they are instructed to look at the pole with the snake on it so that they can be healed and live. What's the expression? We need the hair of the dog that bit us in order to be okay. That's the way it is with the COVID-19. We all need to get the vaccine. Isn't that always the way? Naming the cause of our brokenness is the beginning of our journey toward healing. How do we overcome our fears? Well, we must face them. We must look directly into our fears in order to conquer them. We cannot run away or look in another direction because that is when our fears will overcome us. We must be aware. We must walk through the fire. How do we overcome our weaknesses? We address them and we learn from them a new way to turn them into strengths. And as the gospel says, we are a people that when the light came into the world, we love the darkness more than the light. And so for the brokenness of the world and the healing of the nations, Jesus becomes the one who is lifted high on a pole for the sake of our healing. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And this is the gift of God, as Paul tells the Ephesians. We are healed. We are saved. We are given life because God's grace has been graciously and generously given. Let this next verse live in your heart. It is the most quoted scripture outside of Psalm 23. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And this is all the Lord's doing, because God is faithful even when we are not. Do you believe that? I do, and I hope that you do too. Now as the vaccine rolls out over the next few months, may our gracious and loving God continue to give us patience until it is our turn to receive the vaccine. And may God continue to kindle in our hearts a fire for his love, for hope, and peace in our lives and in the lives of others. May this upcoming year be a year of returning to a renewed sense of normalcy. Amen? Amen.